Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have another swatch and review video for you. This one is going to be the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. This is their second one with a rosy toned theme. The first one was more of a brown toned theme and I never did pick that one up. Um, but I did see quite a few people uh, use it and so I was a little bit intrigued when I saw the second one come out. So the shades are pretty self-explanatory. There's five shimmers in the top row and five matte powders in the bottom row along with two cream bases. One of the shimmers is a looks like a multi-chrome. It might just be a duochrome. I'm not totally sure. Um, I do have photos here at two different angles so if you look at the center shade, the center shimmer shade on the top row, straight on here, looks pretty pink um, at more of an extreme angle. It's got a golden green shift to it. The shift is much more obvious in the pan in these photos than it is once I apply the shade to the eye. But the shade, it does have a lot of dimension to it. The two cream bases here have a little door of their own to cover them and protect them from any um, kick up from the other shades next to it. After using this palette several times, it actually doesn't have that much kick up, but it's still nice. I'm glad that they included this because it helps to keep those shades clean. Jumping into the swatches, I'm starting with the shade Loyal. This is one of the cream bases, and right away it shows up with a lot of pigmentation. It spreads over the skin evenly. Um, these shades have a lot of slip to them. They don't really feel like what I would expect from a cream shadow. They almost feel like lipsticks or like cream blushes, um, but they, do, they don't have that kind of oily feel that those types of products have. They, um, it will kind of settle into, into the skin after a while, and it seems like the moisture in the product will absorb into the skin. And they do set down some, though they don't totally set down to like a dry, unmovable finish. They do kind of um, remain movable even well after I apply them. Next up is the shade Affair. This is the deepest shimmer. It is a shimmer with all small particles. I don't see any large sparkles in this. It has a lot of color payoff. It's very pigmented. It... Um, is almost opaque in one swipe swatched here. Uh, later on, I am going to show you a look where I applied this with brushes. Um, I have yet to apply this with just my finger to the eye, um, but when I apply this with brushes, I do have to continually be layering it to get it to have this same kind of opacity that you see in the swatch here. But um, it, it still does have a lot of uh, pigment to it. The next one is called Desire, and this one is a different texture. This has a, uh, looks like a matte, corally orange base color to it, kind of a sheer base color, and then it's got a ton of larger golden sparkle, and it will kind of look more sheer and more sparkly at first with a lighter layer, and the more I layer this up, it, it begins to look closer to something metallic. This didn't have a lot of sparkle fallout when I used it on the eye, um, and that was the case for all of this type of sparkly finish in the palette. Uh, I was very surprised with how well these adhered to the eye. They pick up easily and they transfer easily from either my finger or from a brush to the lid and they grab onto the lid. There is some fallout, but it's um, surprisingly very minor most of it will brush away pretty easily. Some of the shades are a little bit more, I would say, my, kind of like waxy or tacky feeling, and that helps it grip. So sometimes that will cause it to stick. The fallout will cause it, that will cause the fallout to stick to the face. So like underneath the eyes or on the cheeks. Um, but I really didn't have a hard time with Fallout in general with this palette. So here is that multi-chrome or duochrome, however you want to describe this kind of shade. This is a lot less impressive in the swatch here. It's a lot lighter. 
and it probably a lot of that has to do with the lighting and the angle that I'm showing that out here. Um, but in general, this shade doesn't have much of a base color to it. It's pretty sheer and it's mostly made up of these sparkles. And depending on the angle that the light is hitting those sparkles, you'll get more of a pinky shift or more of like a golden kind of color to it. For me, the most obvious color I see here is the pink. In the swatch, it looks kind of uh, muted and very neutral, but on the eye in real life, I get more of like a pinky look from this shade. Next up, we have the shade Romance. This one is another pink shimmer, but this one is more one-dimensional. Like it's, it's all just one color, no matter what angle I look at it from. So it's more like, I don't know if you want to use the word boring, but it's not as uh, interesting as the previous shade. And it's not super different looking here at the at this angle. And the last shimmer we have is the shade Adore. And this one is just another kind of straight up gold shimmer. This one seems to have more color payoff than the previous two shimmers. I think it may possibly have more of a base color to it. Um, it, it goes on more opaque in fewer swipes. Starting on the bottom row here, I have the shade Unfaithful. This is the second cream base. And this one is just like the other one. It has a lot of pigmentation, a lot of slip, and it goes on very evenly. The next shade is Heartache, and this is just a deep matte brown. These mattes have a very smooth, very velvety fine texture to them. They spread over the skin evenly. They, for the most part, don't look patchy depending on how I apply them. Um, by themselves, without any primer, they apply very smoothly, very evenly. They look uh, flattering on the lids. With a primer, they can tend to look slightly patchy just because my primer tends to be kind of drying. The next shade is called Passion. And this is a lighter, more orangey toned brown. This next shade is called Devotion, and this is one of the more true to this palette's theme, uh, kind of more of a rosy undertone to it. This is the shade Amour. I don't know how you pronounce this. This is um, more of a brownish pink shade, a little bit more warmer, a little bit more warm and neutral compared to the previous shade, but not too far off in depth. And the last shade is called Crush, and this is a very light peachy shade. It has a lot of pigment, um, but against my skin tone, it doesn't show up super well by itself, so it helps to use something like a white, uh, matte white or something right next to it, at least on my skin tone, to help it to stand out a little bit better. And I wanted to show you guys how this palette looks after holding it and touching it and getting my fingers all over it. It shows every fingerprint, every speck of dust. It is one of those mirrored um, reflective kinds of packagings. It looks very pretty when it's brand new and clean, but it um, doesn't stay that way for very long. And here's what the inside of it looks like after being swatched. This is after very many swatches. I've done individual swatches, group swatches, and the, the video swatches here. So at least three or four times I've kind of had my fingers in these palettes, which sometimes will ruin eyeshadows, but these held up very well. I don't see any hard pan. Um, kick up was very minimal. This is the first look that I did with this palette, and I used kind of most of the most obvious like expected rosy shades I wanted to go for like what the theme of the palette is just a standard rosy pretty eye I used that multi-chrome all over the lid there and you can see here it doesn't um it just looks like a pink 
sparkle, it's really hard to show the dimension in photos. I did get a, a um, slightly out of focus photo here. Maybe you can see a little bit of the, the green sparkle there showing up. Later on, I'll show in another look where I tried to get the lighting from the side. So hopefully I could get more of that shift on the lid. This is the second look, and for this one I only used two shades. I used the deepest shimmer all over the top lid, and I used that multi-chrome again on the lower outer lash line. Um, the, the deeper shimmer blended out really well on its own. Here I've got a close-up photo so you can see kind of how fine the particles are and how well it blends out, and you can also see I applied the, the shade Lust on the lower lash line more heavily than I applied it in the previous look. I was trying to see if I can get more of that shiftiness to show up, but it really didn't show up much more here. So the top lid shade that I used, this is the eye that I didn't prime. Like this was immediately after application and it already looks like it's creasing here. Um, it was also kind of hard to apply this shade evenly. It's got a ton of pigment, a ton of color payoff, and it's beautiful. But um, I found that when I apply this with a brush versus when I apply it in a swatch with my finger, it, it's a different outcome. I get it a very opaque color payoff immediately when I swatch with my finger. If I use a brush, I feel like I can continue building on this color and building and building and it seems to take forever to get that maximum opacity. Um, so that's kind of what happened here. It looks a little bit like I'm missing some color there on the outer corner. I do wanna try this shade one more time, just applying it with my finger and seeing what happens. So I'm going for round three using the same shimmer here on this look. I wanted to use it as much as possible over semi bare looking lid so i'm just using two uh, color pop matte eyeshadows as kind of a base to this look and then that shade lust just applied all over the lid i wanted to see how much base color it has and how shifty it is just on its own without the help of a deeper shade underneath so it is mostly made up of just sparkle there's hardly any base color if any um, but it is it's still very pretty even applied like this. It's got a kind of airy, ethereal kind of look to it. And then I wanted to show this with the lighting from the side to hopefully get that shift to show up. And I feel like it does kind of show up a little bit more here, but still I find it very subtle, very, very subtle on the eye compared to the way that it looks in the pan. For this look, I dove into both of the cream shades. I used the lighter one as a base all over the lid and I blended it up into the crease. And then I topped it with one of the light shimmers. I topped it with the shade Romance, which is just a light shimmery pink, a very straightforward color. I feel like um, the combination of these two shades on the top lid create a very like wet look to the lid, um, very reflective. Um, these cream shades I found creased on me very quickly, even before I took photos, it already started to crease. And I wanted to experiment with the darker one and see how that could work as a liner. After using the lighter one on the lid and seeing how pigmented it was, I was thinking, well, maybe the darker one's got plenty of pigment to be used as a liner, and it actually does. It's not quite as pigmented as a true liner, but it really does show up well used this way. For this next look, this is pretty typical for me to, to go for kind of a lot of different shades. I think I used like six or seven shades here. I used the lightest matte shade as kind of a transition shade, and then I used a separate highlight that's not in this palette, a light colored shade to help that light peachy shade show up. And I used a couple other of the mid-tone browns and the deeper brown on the outer corner there. So the whole top lid is all matte, and then I kept everything on the lower lash line all shimmer. And I am using the shades of Fair and Desire next to each other. I wanted to apply these two next to each other because one of them has a very burgundy color to it, and the other is very orangey, and I thought they looked very pretty swatched right next to each other. Unfortunately, I applied them overlapping a little bit too much 
much so it's hard to see them very clearly next to each other. I do want to try it look like this again where those two shades are very distinctly obvious next to each other. But anyway, I was happy with how everything applied here. For the inner corner, I used the lightest shimmer. That one is the shade Adore and I used it with a dry pencil brush only. I did not wet the brush and I was able to build it up to this metallic finish. However, I will say this goes on very sparkly and very sheer at first, um, which is pretty on its own. But to get it to this metallic finish, I had to build many, many layers of it. I was able to do this without very much fallout at all, but which is surprising. I mean, most of the these types of shades that have large sparkle that I use on a dry brush on the inner corner almost always will give me a ton, a ton of fallout. So I was very pleasantly surprised with how this is formulated and how well it adheres to the skin. And just up close here, I wanted to show the matte shades on the outer corner here. You may be able to see a little bit of accentuation of the texture here. This is the eye that I used primer on and I feel like the primer creates a little bit more of a dry surface and it it seems like it makes some of these deeper shades look a little bit more patchy. And then I'm going to show you my other eye that I don't have any primer on. They, the shades go on a lot more smoothly and they don't cling anywhere. That's something that I have an issue with with many different palettes and primer. Um, but my shadows will not last if I don't use primer. So there we go. So for this last look, I went for mostly all of the peachy and orangey toned shades. I especially wanted to use that shade Desire all over the lid, mostly by itself. I wanted to see how much of that base color would show up um, just on its own and how orangey it would look because it it looked so um, deep when I layered it over that uh, deep plummy shade in the previous look. And I liked how um, bright and vibrant it looked here, just used by itself. The light peachy matte shade that I used here, this is the shade Crush. To get that to show up a little bit more, I used a matte white highlight on the inner corner and brow bone. If I just use this shade by itself, it kind of gets lost on my skin. It just is so close to my skin tone. Um, but with the help of those lighter mattes, it kind of helps to bring out some of that peachiness. And for this look, I wanted to try using the cream shades as different, like a different kind of product. So I used the lighter one as a blush, and I used a combo of both of the shades as lipstick. And I felt that they worked well, both used both ways. Um, I would say used as a blush is probably my favorite way to use these shades. They don't last well as eyeshadow. And they're just very slightly drying to be used as lipstick, but they are beautiful as blushes. A wonderful texture for them. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I just want to summarize. I'm, I'm very happy with this palette. I think it was a great purchase and I do recommend it. I would caution you if you have issues with wear time and that's something that's going to bother you, then maybe you might want to skip it. Um, but otherwise I think the quality is really, really nice.